All right, welcome everyone to the February 2021 virtual field trip to Bradley Woods Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious and I'm your bird walk leader tonight. I'm also the Western Chicago Audubon uh, board member and field trip co-coordinator. And a little bit about uh, these virtual field trips in case you're new this evening. Every month I select a location for participants to visit independently or with members of their household. And while there, participants keep a bird list, journal, um, take photos, write poetry, have some sort of item along those lines that they submit back to me and I take those items and uh, compile them into the presentation that I'm going to uh, show you all tonight and we can have a discussion uh, at the end. All right, so Bradley Woods Reservation. The only swamp forest in Cleveland Metro Parks, Bradley Woods Reservation is full of cultural and natural uniqueness. Nestled off Bradley Road in Westlake sits 795 acres of a little park gem called Bradley Woods Reservation. A walking path surrounds <clears throat> a pond called Buns Lake where ducks and geese are plentiful and the occasional blue heron has been known to visit as well. The forest is laden with pin oak, yellow birch, sour gum, red maple, and tulip trees. Along with the path around the lake, there are over two miles of hiking trails. An open grassy area near the picnic shelter offers space for informal recreation, and a nearby monarch butterfly way station provides these threatened insects a place to rest. Buns Lake, dedicated in 1986, was created to provide waterfowl habitat and serve as a pleasant spot for nature lovers. The reservation also conserves wildlife habitat with large tracts of relatively undisturbed woodlands and open areas with a large deer population. Bradley Woods Reservation is on a massive formation of Berea sandstone. The stone is easily seen in the old quarry sites located in various areas of the reservation. The quarries were in operation over 50 years ago and produced sandstone for building stones. And then all of those quotes uh, different paragraphs of quotes that you see there are all found at the Cleveland Metro Parks Bradley Woods Reservation. They weren't exactly in that order. Um, they were in different areas of the web page, but I kind of put them in this order for this presentation so it made more sense. All right, the target species was the black-capped chickadee. A bird almost universally considered cute thanks to its oversized round head, tiny body, and curiosity about everything, including humans. The chickadee's black cap and bib, white cheeks, gray back, wings, and tail, and whitish underside with buffy sides are distinctive. Its habit of investigating people and everything else is in its home territory, and quickness to discover bird feeders make it one of the first birds most people learn. And that is from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and a picture of the black-capped chickadee that I actually took at the North Chagrin Reservation back in January. And I don't think I introduced uh, Tom's beautiful picture on the last slide of Buns Lake Wildlife Area at Bradley Woods Reservation. Very beautiful uh, scene from the reservation. So I also decided to include a species of honorable mention, the tufted titmouse. So the black-capped chickadee was sighted at Bradley Woods Reservation, but it was not as prevalent as I had hoped. However, the tufted titmouse was overwhelmingly present and deserves an honorable mention. A little gray bird with an echoing voice, the tufted titmouse is common in eastern deciduous forests and a frequent visitor to feeders. The large black eyes, small round bill, and brushy crest gives these birds a quiet but eager expression that matches the way they flit through canopies, hang from twig ends, and drop into bird feeders. When a titmouse finds a large seed, you'll see it carry the prize to a perch and crack it with sharp wax of its stout bill. And that uh, description is also from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Uh, a little Q&A, I was curious, is it uh, tough to tit mouses or tit mice for the plural form? And I discovered that uh, both the Cornell Lab and Sibley use tit mice for the plural form of that bird. And a gorgeous, a very cute picture of a tuft to tit mouse at Bradley Woods Reservation by Tom Fishburn. And you can see it is dangling from a twig as was described in the paragraph I read to you from the Cornell Lab. 
All right, so I'm up first. I uh, logged 17 species over three visits to the reservation in February. I visited Bradley Woods on February 6th, 20th, and the 27th. So on February 6th, I arrived at the reservation at 9.36 a.m. and concluded my walk at 12.20 p.m. It was a frosty, negative four degrees Fahrenheit with wind chill and didn't warm up by much throughout my visit. I started out on the Buns Lake Loop where I was glad I had donned my slip-on cleats as the pavement was icy, and then I took the Cahoon Creek Loop. I didn't see much of anything until about an hour onto the trails, but once 10.30 a.m. rolled around, the woods seemed to be full of red-bellied woodpecker who had finally come out of hiding despite the cold. I also saw a hairy woodpecker who was too quick for a photograph. I then decided to check out the Cory Loop Trail and was delighted to see a few tufted tit mice as I walked down the main driveway toward the trail entrance. And on the right hand side, a picture I took of a red bellied woodpecker at the reservation. And then here are, it, it's, it's the same bird, the same tufted tit mouse on my way to the Cory Loop Trail against that brilliant blue sky. It was really cold, but man, was it just a gorgeous sky that day. The Cory Loop Trail turned out to be my new favorite trail in the reservation and is where I spent my other visits. I wasn't far onto the trail on my first visit when I saw two pileated woodpecker. Pileated woodpeckers will stay and defend their territory throughout the year, so I hope to see them on return visits to the park. I also saw white-breasted nuthatch and black-capped chickadee on this trail. And then on the left side there is the female pileated, and then on the right is the male pileated. I was so pleased to get a photograph of both of them. And here are, I believe this is the same white-breasted nuthatch, just three different photos at the reservation. February 20th. I started my visit a little earlier than my first visit at 8.32 a.m. It was slightly warmer than my last visit at a field like two degrees Fahrenheit. There wasn't really much of a difference. Uh, and a fresh blanket of snow draped the landscape. I did not see the pileated woodpecker this visit, but I did hear both of them immediately upon exiting my car. I hurried to the Cory Loop Trail, but had no luck finding them, though I heard them calling back and forth on either side of me. Finally, their calls faded away, and I knew they had moved on. Instead of the pileated, I saw downy, hairy, and red-bellied woodpecker. The northern cardinals were amazing, with one male singing a beautiful song. This beautiful and bright bird was tucked away in a thorn bush, though that did little to conceal him. I switched to pinpoint focus for the first photo until he flew out into the open for the next two photos in the series, which I'll show you on the next slide. Uh, there was also a gorgeous American robin, a couple of white-breasted nuthatch, and black-capped chickadee, but the tufted titmice really stole the show as I counted six individual birds of that species. So on the left-hand side there, I have the, a picture of the male cardinal in the thorn bush. I just pinpoint focused right on his eye, and I, I think it turned out um, okay. I was happy with it. And then here, the cardinal had flown out into the open, a little easier to focus on him, and the snow gently falling around him. And then here is, this is the same downy woodpecker, just two different poses at Bradley Woods Reservation. An American robin I saw on the left and then the red bellied that I mentioned on the right at Bradley Woods Reservation. And the, that American robin on the left was eating those. You could see there's some blueberries in that bush. He, he was eating those. And then, uh, I can't, I believe this is the same white-breasted nuthatch, just two different poses at Bradley Woods Reservation. And this one, the snow was very deep, and I trudged through, this wasn't actually on the trail, but it was, I was heading back to the car, and I saw it near, um, like, the, the clear, in the clearing heading to the picnic shelter, there are some trees there, and I, trudged through very deep snow <laughs> to get this picture. I, I, I forged a path myself, but it was worth it. I, I really like these images. And then the tufted tit mice that stole the show, this, is, this one is actually the same bird. Uh, and this one was taken, I believe, along a maintenance uh, path. 
that kind of connects with the Cahoon Loop Trail. So when you take the Cahoon Loop Trail, it goes around and it connects to the maintenance path and you take that back to the main road. And here's a different tough to tit mouse, but the same in these two photos here. And snow was falling um, in these images. All right, February 27th. On the morning of February 27th, I went into my visit at Bradley Woods Reservation with my new lens, a 100 to 400 millimeter. Uh, the, my previous one was 100 to 300. I thought that there would be more of a difference in millimeters, but there isn't really. It just gives me a little more reach, uh, but it is a better quality lens overall, so I am happy about that. So anyways, the morning started out cloudy with light drizzle at 42 degrees Fahrenheit, which made it difficult to take photos for the first hour of my walk. It's a good thing I consider myself a birder first and a photographer second, as I could still really enjoy the birds and their song, even if I couldn't capture the moments to share with others. Uh, to be clear, my camera lens are fine in light rain. It was the lack of light that made photography difficult, at least at my skill level. All right, I started out on the Cory Loop Trail, which was completely flooded in many places due to the melting snow, and I was glad my boots served me well. In fact, I crossed over a few low bridges that I didn't even know were there, as they had been completely covered with snow on my previous visits. I was going to take a picture of one of those bridges when I saw a flash of black and white wing. The pair of pileated woodpecker came into view. I could see their I could see the pair just fine with my binoculars, but they were too obscured by branches and low light to get a good capture. When the pileated flew out of sight, I followed the sweet sound of northern cardinals and found a beautiful female perched on a bush. And there she is on the left-hand side. As I continued my walk along the Cory Loop Trail, I discovered I had missed more than a couple of bridges in the deep winter snow of previous visits. I also had no idea I had been walking right by this rusted out vehicle on the left there. And the pools were also looking lovely as the ice and snow were melting. And that image is on the right. And then here's another slushy forest pool with some remains of the old quarry was also a lovely sight along the Cory Loop Trail. And these images of like this one and these two, I actually took with my iPhone. So this is um, you know different from my, my good camera. <laughs> All right, on the return loop, I saw a beautiful song sparrow perched within a leafless bush. There was also a flock of dark-eyed junco hopping about on the ground underneath the bushes. However, a beautiful female did fly up to perch on the top of a bush and posed for me. There were also a few white-throated sparrow mixed in with the junco flock. Tufted titmice and red-bellied woodpeckers were also present, but high in the treetops on, on this visit. I also did log two black-capped chickadee and eBird for the visit, but they eluded my camera. The chickadees at Bradley Woods do seem shyer than usual, which I think Sean was the only one who caught one picture <laughs> of a chickadee <laughs> at Bradley Woods. So usually there, you know, whenever I go um, hiking to other locations, they they tend to even follow me, and these these were very elusive. But anyways, here is the picture of the song sparrow. Um, at Bradley Woods Reservation. It was the only one I saw on my visits. And then on the left is the female dark-eyed junco that flew up. She was hopping on the ground with the others, and then she flew up and did perch on that bush. And you can see right behind it is a young tree that had snapped uh, relatively recently, it seems, by, by the look of that wood sticking out there. And then on the right, a white-throated sparrow, who I did happen, when it was hopping around on the ground, I did happen to catch him right between um, a bush and some grasses there. All right, the downy woodpeckers really stole the show that morning. At the end of my visit, I saw two male downies having a dispute. Birds are becoming more territorial now that spring is approaching, and these two males were no exception. The male on the left, landed on a branch already occupied by the male on the right, and in true downy fashion, they both flared their tails and wagged their beaks at one another. Their bodies also seemed to go rigid during the display. And this went on for a few minutes before one of them finally backed down. It was really interesting behavior to observe. Uh, so the pictures I have here, the, the picture on the left is the, the downy that was on the left side of these two, and this 
I, I was following him with my camera and I, I took this the moment he jumped on that branch and noticed that the other Donnie was there. You can see that expression in his face. He is mad <laughs> or shocked. I'm not sure which one. Um, but I thought that was such a cute expression, although he didn't enjoy it. Uh, and then on the right are the two of them together doing their display, trying to scare the other one off or out of their, its territory. And you can see their tails are flared, their beaks are pointed in the air. They seem to be kind of bobbing up and down. Uh, I've read on the, I believe it was Cornell Lab of Ornithology, about these downy displays that they usually wag from side to side. I saw a little bit of that, but it was more bobbing up and down at each other is what I happen to notice this time. Um, so I'll be interested to hear during the discussion if any of you have ever seen this happen and, and what it looked like to you. And then here's uh, three more pictures. So I took a close up of both the downy on the left and the one on the right uh, in their display and then this picture in the middle is another wide shot, but as you can see, the I don't know if you noticed from on this shot, the Donnie on the left is like right up against those twigs, and in this shot, he had backed up a little bit, and the Donnie on the left is the one that eventually backed down and, and flew away first. So that's what happened. All right, here's my bird list. Uh, notable species, Downy woodpecker, just because uh, that was a really interesting behavior to observe on my last visit. The pileated woodpecker, always a pleasure to see. Black-capped chickadee and tufted titmouse, since those were the target species and species of honorable mention. And then the northern cardinal, I really enjoyed um, hearing their beautiful song um, in February. And then a picture I took of a tufted titmouse at Bradley Woods Reservation. All right, then Joanne and Terry Gorgeous uh, participated in February. They saw three species, and they birded on February 21st. So Joanne says, Terry and I took a walk at Bradley Woods Reservation today, February 21st. It was a sunny day, about 31 degrees, and we had a very nice walk from 12.50 p.m. until 2.15 p.m. However, the bird watching was on the slim side. We tallied one each of three species, blue jay, red-bellied woodpecker, and white-breasted nuthatch. We did tally two bird watchers in the parking lot, Tom and Marianne Romito. So that, that's fun. Tom and Marianne are uh, fellow board members at Western Chicago Audubon. So it must have been fun to run into them. And then a picture I took of a white-breasted nuthatch while I was at the reservation. Uh, I used to illustrate this page since they did see one of those. And before I go any further, I just want to see if anyone has logged in that has submitted something to me. Just Sean and Tom. Okay, cool. All right, so Marianne and John Henderson uh, saw 12 species and birded on February 23rd. Uh, Marianne says, we delayed our visit to Bradley Woods until the weather broke, which I completely understand. Uh, it was a relatively balmy 40 degrees Fahrenheit today, and although the trails were icy, the snow was finally melting. We spotted 12 species of winter birds, including two pileated woodpeckers. I'm so happy they saw them. That's wonderful. I was hoping, I was hoping that some other participants would see them as well. Uh, she says, Buns Lake was completely frozen, so no water birds. Unfortunately, we missed the two owls that have been sighted recently, the barred owl and the great horned owl. I didn't see any owls either. I, I went three times. Um, I did look for owls, but I, I, didn't, I didn't happen to find them, unfortunately. So our star sighting was a mammal, a large raccoon with a luxur luxuriant brown coat snoozing on a fallen tree. Nice day for a winter walk. We walked all three loop trails in the Buns Lake area. And so then I uh, provided a picture that I took of a uh, pileated woodpecker at Bradley Woods Reservation. Okay, I got to click on it again. Sorry, guys. There we go. All right, so this is Marianne and John's list. Uh, notable species, the pileated woodpecker, black-capped chickadee, and tufted titmouse. And then um, I provided a picture that Tom submitted of a dark-eyed junco at Bradley Woods Reservation for this uh, slide. Beautiful image of a, a junco. Okay. All right, Karu and Sugumi Tsubone 
uh, birded on February 23rd. She says, on February 23rd, it's just a beautiful day. It's been a while since we could feel sunshine and see the clear blue sky the last time. The ice of the creek was partially melted, yet it's chilly. Many people and dogs out there for this nice weather, too. Sugumi, so my daughter, and I went on the loop trail twice. On the first loop, we only heard birds, such as black-capped chickadees and cardinals. On the second loop, they finally showed up. A couple of titmice flew across the trail from the creek to the trees. Fortunately, one titmouse perched on the branch closer to us. It's just so cute to see her or him opening and closing its wings. That was too attractive. I had forgotten to take pictures for a while after I only took several shots and it's quickly gone. This photo is my best shot there, but a bit unfocused. We enjoy the rest of the trail and the day. And I think that's a really cute picture that Karu took of that, that titmouse. So well done. And I'm, I'm glad that her and her daughter enjoyed their visit. So Alan Rand uh, birded on February 27th and logged 13 species of birds. Uh, he says, my schedule this month did not allow me to get out much. Stopped at Bradley Woods on 227. Temps were mild and the snow was just about melted, but the pond was still iced over. The majority of the activity was behind the parking area. Dark-eyed juncos and tufted titmice were out in double-digit numbers. Managed 13 species in total while I was there. And I provided a, a picture of a tufted titmouse at Bradley Woods Reservation that I took during one of my visits. And then here is Owl's bird list. Uh, notable species, the hairy woodpecker, black cap chickadee, tufted titmouse, and eastern bluebird. I think he's the only one who saw an eastern bluebird during uh, his visit. So nice find there. And then uh, a, a picture that I took of an American robin at Bradley Woods Reservation. And although this looks like the other picture that I took, it really, it, it's a different picture. <laughs> so I did not duplicate it, but I had to double check because uh, it's very similar to another picture I had. All right. Uh, Sean, would you like me to take this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, fantastic. So Sean saw 11 species and visited the reservation five times. So I think you get the award for most visits uh, this time around. So he says, I visited five times, 26, 27, 213, 220, and 227. When I first arrived at Bradley Woods, the park appeared small. I only saw the large pavilion and secondary parking lot a little further ahead. I was a little confused because I had drove a pretty good distance up the entrance road to get to the parking area and I thought there has to be more than this. Thankfully, I was correct in that thought. Bradley Woods has many trails within the woods and you can easily walk for hours and nothing but trees surround you and that was exactly what I did. I had originally walked around the pond and pavilion area until I saw Tom Fishburne on one of my visits. He told me about the Cory Loop Trail just up the entryway and that changed everything. This quickly became my favorite trail as I was able to capture some gorgeous landscape shots and see the majority of species on my list. Uh, blue jays were very abundant throughout the trail and they made their presence known as they patrolled from high up in the trees. And on the right is a picture that Sean took of the Cory Loop Trail at Bradley Woods Reservation. And this was one of, uh, I don't know if I have a favorite stretch on the trail, but I love this stretch. This is where all the sparrows were, as they love that you could see some, some bushes um, out there. And there is a pond a little further if you keep going straight um, that I bet you will have some nice birds around it once, once it melts. All right, red-bellied woodpeckers also called out from the treetops as they were looking for their next meal. Along the path, I also was able to capture a robin bouncing from branch to branch in a small tree just off the path. I took many shots of this robin and also had a lucky shot where I caught the robin mid-flight and it appeared to be stuck in the tree. Uh, it does kind of look like that. Uh, I also found my one and only black-capped chickadee on this path as well. It was bouncing around a lot and did not want its picture taken. So on the left is the picture that Sean described of the robin, and in that still frame there, it does look like it just kind of got, you know, caught in the tree, um, but I bet it didn't. I bet it just flew on. All right, and then here's two more pictures of a robin uh, at Bradley Woods Reservation taken by Sean Missig.
and the black-capped chickadee, the only photo of one <laughs> from this trip um, at Bradley Woods Reservation taken by Sean. So good job capturing that one. And they were very shy. So after exiting this trail, I found a fox squirrel hanging upside down on the side of a tree. It was likely sunning itself and thought it blended in, but it didn't escape my camera. I made several laps around the pond each trip, but was not able to capture anything on that path. However, with all the snow on the ground, it made for an amazing walk in the park. Over by the large pavilion, I saw a few white-breasted nuthatches moving up and down the trees as they always do. I was able to get a few shots before they flew off to the next tree in search of food. The main service road was the other hot spot for me. And here are uh, two pictures that Sean took of the fox squirrel. And then the next slide here, I have the third picture of the fox squirrel. I love that picture and how it's just kind of looking right at the camera. And then a picture of the white-breasted nuthatch that Sean saw at Bradley Woods Reservation. All right, during my visit on 227, I had noticed a female cardinal bobbing and weaving on a branch. At one point, she looked almost like a jet with her wings and tail spread out. It wasn't until a male cardinal flew in that I understood what she was doing. They flew off together, and I did not see them again. 227 also brought a welcome sight, first chipmunk of the year. There were quite a few chipmunks running and playing throughout all of the downed trees. They also happened to avoid my camera as well. Though I may not have come home with a thousand pictures from each trip, Bradley Woods was a wonderful location that I will be visiting throughout the year. Here's uh, the picture of the female cardinal at Bradley Woods Reservation. And then uh, the male northern cardinal on the left and the female northern cardinal in flight on the right. And this is the one I believe Sean was talking about when he said it looked like a jet, and it really does. All right, and then some landscape photos, beautiful landscape photos. Uh, snowy trail on the left and the swamp forest and the sun on the right at Bradley Woods Reservation by Sean. And species list. Notable species here, tufted titmouse, white-breasted nuthatch, black-capped chickadee, and downy woodpecker. And a picture on the left of a tufted titmouse with a peanut at Bradley Woods Reservation. All right, Tom, um, I don't know if you want to take this. I know you don't know what I put in here, so you'd, you'd be kind of winging it. But um, let me know if, if you want me to go through them or if you would like to speak. I'll get started. We can, we can work together. Cool. You know, Sounds good. If I miss something. But there's the robins that Nancy uh, messaged mm -hmm. about, too. Yeah, I, was, I thought it was great to see the robins um, in the wintertime. And, um, I don't know if I've ever seen so many robins uh, as I have this winter, but um, yeah, there's a uh, two there. I didn't get a whole lot of birds overall, but um, enjoyed my hikes. Uh, let's see what you got next. Yeah, the tip mice, like you say, that was that was a uh, you know a real treat to see so many, and um, most of these I think are the same. Titmouse on this one time that it was, was hanging out by the road and it grabbed a nut there and then was, um, I think you'll see it flew up to the tree. Um, but I got a couple shots of it in some sunlight here um, with a little spark inside of, uh, that, I, that I particularly liked. Uh, what you got next? And then when it flew up to the tree to work on the on the nut and it broke up a little bit. Uh, the sunlight wasn't quite as good up there, but I just love seeing it with its uh, feathers fluffing and it's uh, working on the on that nut in between its its feet there. So that was that was pretty neat. Uh, next slide. I had to get a couple of little woodpeckers, downy woodpeckers, kind of distant. Um, yeah, I, I think I saw a black cap chickadee too. I'm sure a couple of times that they're so far away. Yeah. Your remark about them being so elusive, it, it was unusual for those. But um, the uh, the downies were were around, at least a few of them. So I got a couple distant pictures there. What you got next? 
red belly there on the left, the blue jay in the middle, and that uh, nut hatch on the right hand side was uh, pretty far away as well. It was able to crop it significantly enough to get a decent picture out of that. Um, okay, next, what you got? Yeah, I, I was thrilled with the the winter scenery early. I only only got to uh, Bradley Woods three times. Um, but the first day I was there was was wonderful. Um, after the snow was was f so fresh, uh, so I really enjoyed the the scenery shots that I was taking. So I was trying to catch some reflections, as you can see there, of some of the Edsbuns Lake um, Park. There were um, it was such a beautiful day. Uh, next slide. On the left there, I was trying to get that reflection of the sun off the, the uh, I believe that's Cah yeah, Cahoon's Creek there. Uh, this is the first time I ever really did any, you know, hiking really at Bradley Woods. I just kind of drove in and out before just to kind of see. Uh, never really spent much time um, there at all. And um, I was just thrilled with um, with what I found there. And all three of the, the trails that, um, I took, the Buns Lake, this one here, the Cahoon Creek, as well as the Quarry Loop. And um, on that right side, anyway, you can see that the, the, the snow was just so fresh on the creek that uh, I looked at that and said, i got to get a good picture of that. And so I was very happy with that. Next slide. And that's that's it. Thank you, Tom, for submitting those beautiful pictures. Um, it, it's always nice to see the landscapes as well as the birds. So I, I really do appreciate that. So a, a huge thank you to Joanne and Terry Gorgeous, Marianne and John Henderson, Karu and Sugumi Sabone, Al Ran, Sean Missig, and Tom Fishburn for your contributions uh, to this field trip. And then a, a, a grand thank you to Cleveland Metro Parks for Bradley Woods Reservation. Uh, Bradley Woods Reservation is located at 4538 Bradley Road in Westlake, Ohio. Um, just so you know, if you decide to go and visit the reservation after seeing this presentation, when I put that address in my GPS, it just took me to the intersection of Center Ridge and Bradley Road. The entrance to Bradley Woods Reservation is south of that intersection on Bradley. So if if you're heading from the north, just go a little bit further on Bradley Road south and you'll get to the entrance to the reservation. Uh, please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. We have a tile on the home page. It's Virtual Field Trips 2021. So click that and you can see the upcoming field trips we have and, and the meetups if, if you really just want to participate in those instead. Um, and yeah, that you can register for the events there. And then I also just want to mention that we are on Instagram. I am one of the admins on the Instagram account at WC Audubon. And I'm running a program right now. If you post your bird pictures on Instagram and use the hashtag WC Audubon, your photo could be selected to be featured. I'm, I'm doing a a daily bird photo feature. So please use the hashtag with your bird photos and you could be featured. Um, so with that, I'm going to open up uh, this, this call to discussion. So does anyone have any questions or any additional comments uh, regarding Bradley Woods and or anything you saw tonight? I wanted to say that uh, I typed Bradley Woods into my uh, GPS app on my phone, and it actually did get me to the location on Bradley. That's great. I, I might just have an outdated because I use my car GPS, and it just might it might need an update. But I just wanted to possible. put that warning out there. But I'm glad you had no trouble. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. everyone found everyone and, seemed uh, to find it all right. I had some good participation. So I, I also wanted to say that uh, I, I feel your pain with the um, new lens not being exactly what you expected in terms of extra reach. Uh, I recently picked up the Tamron 150 to 600, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm going from a 400 max 
to 600 max now, that should be huge. It's yeah, not. I would think however, so. Yeah. <laughs> however, just like you, it's a much better quality lens. So all I have to say is watch out. My, my pictures have improved immensely, and uh, what I will be submitting, I, I think I've already got enough to submit. I don't even have to go back to Chagrin at all, but I'm Oh, going fantastic. To. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. And we have a comment from Jill. Thanks for doing this. I'm in the Chicago area, but this could be a summer trip for us. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, please come visit us in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we have been doing these virtual field trips since July, so we have uh, plenty of options if you, you wanted to look through some of them and see about some other locations to visit for, for good birding. And this can be found on wcaudubon.org as well. Uh, Betsy, is there a way... If they go into the virtual field trips 2021 tile, can they access past trips there, the recordings? Yes, I think so. I'll okay. I'll the link in just a minute. Thank you very much. Sure. All right, any other comments? Yeah, I see that Nancy loves the winter robins. They are so so wonderful to look at in the winter against the, um, the the white snow. They just really pop, and I I have some holly bushes in my backyard, and the, I, I just love seeing them on the bushes with the the green leaves sticking out of the snow, and then the red berries, and yeah, it's it's really pretty. And if Jill doesn't know about how fabulous. Um, Northern Ohio is in the early part of May. I'd like to say something to her now too. It's uh, it's really a wonderful place for spring migration. The first two weeks uh, in May are a wonderful time to visit Northern Ohio. And even if you don't make it as far as Cleveland, if you can just get to um, the uh, Toledo area uh, or a little bit beyond that, um, um, you can always probably. Um, contact uh, us here and you'll get some help as uh, maybe places where you may want to go. But it's, uh, I moved here to um, Ohio not thinking I would stay and I ended up staying loving it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, I'm really happy somebody saw a bluebird at Bradley Woods because I thought that, that would be ideal. We ought to be seeing bluebirds in that open field by the parking area. So, because um, I was watching. So, I'm glad somebody did. And then the, the the mention of the owls, I figured there had to be owls in there somewhere, mm -hmm. and um, I kept looking up into the trees hoping, but I, I never, never came across any. Yeah, and, um, it seems like the but, perfect woods for owls for sure, and I didn't see any either, but I looked every time. Yeah. I believe I heard me I heard your pileated woodpeckers at one time anyway, and I, and I was on the um, that service trail, and. Um, hearing some pretty big banging into, into those woods. And I so much wanted to travel into those woods, but it was too messy and mushy to, to get in there. I tried and tried looking for them from the Quarry Oak Trail, but when I visited the Quarry Oak Trail, I didn't, I didn't catch them. But, uh, that's a great bird. I'm glad you got to see them in the photograph. Oh, yeah. I was very happy. And I'm actually going to pull up on my app, see if I can get the the sound, and I can play it. Oh, hold on. it helps if I turn my volume up. Could you hear that? Yeah, I heard that. that yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of times we can confuse that with the northern flicker, but the northern, oh. northern flicker is much more, more consistent. If you actually compare the two, um, the northern flicker has a much more consistent type of chatter, whereas the pileate is more up and down, up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. It isn't necessarily volume, although the, I think you know, at, at the same distance between the two, I think the pileated can be louder. But but I've heard some very loud uh, northern flicker uh, <laughs> singing too. But um, the, um, the consistent pattern it would be the northern flicker. The inconsistent pattern like that there is uh, is pileated. Right. That's that's good to point out. Um, also, I think Northern Flicker do 
migrate, don't they? So there, there really aren't a lot around. I'm not saying there are none, but there aren't a lot around Northeast Ohio in February, I don't think. You correct, Nancy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I know you know a ton about <laughs> birds. I want to thank you, Betsy, for putting the, the links in the, the chat. Yeah, Nancy, can you comment on the, on the Flickr? I'd be interested in knowing what you, what you have to say there, if you're still here. Um, yeah, I haven't seen many lately. I think, uh, I think the most I saw was in the fall at um, the Cleveland Lakefront Nature Preserve. That, there were lots of them. Yeah. Because I know they, they feed on the ground and they, they eat ants, and so I, I think that they have to migrate because their food source in winter gets covered up and isn't around, you know. So I think that that's, I think they do, I'm not sure if they're huge migrators, but I think they do go south a little bit to where their food source is, where they can more easily access it. Um, I think I've read that somewhere, but. I did see a northern Nikki. flicker on New Year's Eve. That oh, was crap, the last making me a liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was only one, and it was right. also at uh, Chagrin River Park, which is definitely a very popular park, and a lot of people feed birds and stuff there. Okay. That they're not supposed to, but they do. So I almost wonder if it was just hanging around because there was kind of enough residual seeds or something hanging around. But that is the last one that I did see, and it was just by itself sitting on a branch. And it was okay. male, not a female. Well, according to um, the Cornell of Ornithology, I just pulled it up, flickers in the northern parts of their range move south for the winter, although a few individuals often stay rather far north. So generally, they do go south, but you might see some throughout the winter. So that kind of makes sense that you're able to see one, um, but they do generally go south. So, yeah, I'm glad I was able to confirm that. All right. Any other um, comments, insights, questions before we wrap up the... So, so is Sugumi the our youngest Western Cuyahoga uh, birder, you think? She she probably is. Yeah. My, my kids the cutest have that yet. title, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she loves the birds. And I think uh, Sugumi means, it's something, that her name is something to, to do with a bird. I can't remember what Karu said. It means like little bird, or I'm not sure. It's some, But it's something to do with birds. So very well named. <laughs> we like to hear that at Audubon. All right. Any other comments before we wrap up today's meetup? Thank you again, um, Michelle, for uh, putting all those together. No problem. I, I enjoy this very this project very much. All right. I just want to mention that currently the month of March, uh, the virtual field trip is at North Chagrin Reservation. Uh, so if you can or have the desire to, go ahead and, and head out there. We're looking for the red-winged blackbird. And I've found, I, I just went last weekend, and they are at Oxbow Lagoon, uh, which is just south of Squires Castle on Chagrin River Road. And you can also find them at the, the Nature Center Marsh area. So they're in both places, and they're out, and they're just, they're just gorgeous. And then um, at the Nature Center, they do maintain the bird feeders there, so you get other birds as well um, at that location. And I actually just went, like I said, I went on Sunday, um, and I saw a pileated woodpecker at Oxbow Lagoon, so that was that was really exciting. So head on out there if you're interested and see what you could see. And if you can't make it out, we'll have this um, the meetup the second Wednesday of April at the same time. So feel free to to join us then if you can't make it out to the reservation. All right. What's, par what's parking like at the Oxbow Lagoon there? There is a small park. There is a parking lot. Um, it's small, 
but I, I don't think it gets crowded, so you should be fine. I went on a Sunday morning, and um, I, I met a friend there, and there was just one other car, and there, there's probably enough space for like 10 cars, um, tight, <laughs> but there is parking there, and if for some reason it's full, you can just keep going south um, on Chagrin River Road, and there is another larger parking area, and there is a trail that takes you over to Oxbow. So and it, it's it's not that far. It's it, it's like maybe like a 30 second drive. It was just really quick. It's right there. So there's plenty of parking. Uh, my friend also said you could park at Squires and walk over, but I don't know that path. I'm unfamiliar with it. So if you decide to do that, please check a check the park map for the trails. And at the That's Nature Center, there's plenty of parking. There's plenty of parking. I've been the past it, and I, I might have stopped once. Stopped um, once. Uh, it, it's very, um, it's very um, good looking. Women's area. Mhm. Yeah. All right. So if if you do decide to go to North Chagrin, please register. There's an email I send out to everyone who registers, and you'll get. Um, some information, probably the information I just described tonight, but at least you'll have it written down. And I also include a links to like the park map and, and stuff like that. So you'll get all that at your fingertips if you register. Um, so thank you very much for joining me this evening. And I hope you enjoyed your virtual field trip to Bradley Woods Reservation. And I will see you next month. All right, have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, you too.